Recently, Chinese high-tech company Huawei introduced its latest Ascend 910C AI chip. This move has caught the attention of the global tech industry. With growing tensions between China and the U.S., the Chinese Communist Party (CCP) has been boasting about its ability to become self-reliant in high tech. But how does Huawei's chip perform, and has it managed to narrow the gap with Nvidia? The Wall Street Journal reported that Huawei is now providing samples of the Ascend 910C to major Chinese server companies. Huawei claims this new chip can compete with Nvidia's H100. Back in 2019, Huawei launched the first Ascend 910 chip. It was manufactured by Taiwan's TSMC using 7 nanometer technology. But after the U.S. blacklisted Huawei in 2020, TSMC stopped working with them. In 2022, Huawei introduced the second generation Ascend 910B, made by China's SMIC. Huawei said this chip could rival Nvidia's A100, which was released in 2020. Now, the new Ascend 910C is an upgrade of the 910B. It's designed to compete with Nvidia's H100, which came out in 2022 and serves as the base for Nvidia's scaled-back H20 chip for China. Nvidia, a leading U.S. chip maker, is now valued at over three trillion U.S. dollars. Its core chip technology has left competitors far behind. For a long time, Nvidia has dominated the computer gaming chip market. In an interview, Nvidia CEO explained, "Nvidia CEO Jensen Huang explained the company's overall strategy. Nvidia has shifted its focus from gaming to data centers. The company is also looking to create new markets for its AI technology, such as industrial robots, with a goal of partnering with every computer manufacturer and cloud provider." The CEO also highlighted that right Nvidia's here, AI chips offer the lowest total cost of ownership. This means that while other companies' chips may be cheaper, Nvidia's provide better performance and efficiency in the long run. He proudly claimed that even if competitors gave their chips away for free, they still wouldn't outperform Nvidia's. Although the CEO didn't mention specific competitors, he explained that Nvidia is creating what's known in the tech industry as a virtuous cycle. This means that as more users adopt a platform, the platform improves, which attracts even more users. In August 2022, the U.S. banned Nvidia from selling its A100 and H100 chips to China. Nvidia responded by creating lower performance versions for the Chinese market, the A800 and H800. Then, in October last year, the U.S. banned exports of the A800 and the H800 to China. So Nvidia created the H20, L20, and L2 chips to take their places. Compared to the H100, the H20 has 41% fewer cores and 28% lower AI performance, but it's still Nvidia's best product available in China. Analysts estimate that Nvidia's sales of the H20 this year will reach 12 billion U.S. dollars. Huawei hopes the 910C will help address the performance gap with domestic chips, according to analysts at the research firm Semi Analysis. Huawei's 910C could even perform better than Nvidia's B20 chip, which is still in development for the Chinese market. The Wall Street Journal also reported that major Chinese companies like ByteDance, TikTok's parent company, Baidu, and China Mobile are in talks to buy the 910C. Initial orders could exceed 70,000 chips, with a total value of around 2 billion U.S. dollars. U.S. sanctions limit Huawei's chip progress. A June report from Georgetown University's Center for Security and Emerging Technology examined the gap between Huawei's Ascend 910 series and Nvidia's chips. The report showed that the U.S. sanctions on chips have been effective. The first-generation Ascend 910 chip, made by TSMC from Taiwan, had 30 to 32 active AI cores, but the second-generation 910B and third-generation 910C, made by SMIC from mainland China, have fewer active AI cores. The 910B only has 20 to 25 active cores. Originally, the 910C was designed to have 50 cores, but this was later reduced to 24, indicating limitations in SMIC's manufacturing process. The report also noted that the 910B was just a slight improvement over the first-generation 910. While other companies have tripled their chip performance, the 910B is only 1.2 times faster than the 910. 
The report highlighted that SMIC's production efficiency is low, which makes it expensive for Huawei, SMIC, and their government backers. SMIC's capacity to produce 7 nanometer chips is still limited, forcing Huawei to choose between using this capacity for its most advanced smartphone chips or its AI chips. Assistant researcher Xiao Wen Wang at Taiwan's Institute for National Defense and Security Research said in a recent interview that the Ascend 910C's performance, like Huawei's 7 nanometer smartphone chips, will need to be tested by the market to see if it can really compete with NVIDIA. She pointed out that while SMIC's revenue increased by 22% in the second quarter of this year, its net profit dropped by 59%, leading to the phrase, bleeding to sell products. Despite government effort and heavy media promotion, Huawei's 910C still faces challenges in performance, production capacity, and efficiency. Media hype won't change these facts. She also mentioned that Huawei is practically forcing its chips on the domestic market, requiring buyers to also purchase Huawei solutions and cloud services. For China's leading digital companies, this means spending large sums on chips whose performance and usability remain uncertain. Such transactions are driven more by political pressure than business needs. The CCP support for Huawei has reached an unprecedented level. As U.S.-China tensions rise, the CCP has been touting its ability to achieve technological self-reliance. With increased state support, China is speeding up its efforts to replace U.S. technology with domestic alternatives. One key part of China's push to replace foreign technology is removing U.S. chip makers from its telecom systems. This year, CCP officials instructed major telecom operators to phase out foreign processors like those from Intel and AMD by 2027. This will significantly impact U.S. chip giants. According to the South China Morning Post, while NVIDIA's H20 chip, made for the Chinese market, hasn't been banned, sources say Chinese government departments have unofficially recommended that local companies use domestic AI chips instead of NVIDIA's. Meanwhile, Huawei, a major focus in the China-U.S. tensions, is receiving unprecedented support from the CCP. The Wall Street Journal reports that in 2023, Huawei received 1 billion U.S. dollars in government funding, which is four times more than it received in 2019. Over the last five years, Huawei has received nearly 3 billion U.S. dollars in total. Thanks to this support, profits more than doubled last year, marking the largest increase in at least 20 years. Xiaowen Wang said that Huawei has an excellent R&D team. She added, if it weren't for the CCP's push for the strong China dream, forcing the company to take on more than it can handle, Huawei could have continued working with other countries and advanced its technology even further. She continued, as it is now, Huawei has to struggle just to catch up to the level that the US and Europe reached years ago. Even with AI helping with software coding, it can't quickly surpass the global alliances outside China. Its ability to innovate still falls behind the West. And let's not forget, global AI models haven't made much money yet, so I don't believe China's AI will dominate the world. The more the CCP boasts, the more likely the market will reveal the truth. U.S. expands sanctions, widening the gap. The U.S. and its allies are continuing to limit China's access to advanced technology. In early September, the Netherlands required ASML, a major chip equipment supplier, to get a license before selling certain deep ultraviolet DUV machines to Chinese customers. These machines use multiple exposures to enable advanced chip production. This is another blow to Huawei's Ascend 910C chip. The Russia-Ukraine war, along with the Great Translation Movement, has shown the international community the CCP's deceptive tactics. Recently, the U.S. has been encouraging the Netherlands and Japan to stop selling DUV machines to Chinese companies in order to curb any threats China may pose to global security. Xiaowen Wang explained that the Netherlands' restriction on exporting DUV machines to China is meant to stop China from developing advanced exposure techniques. Without these machines, China will struggle to produce high-quality advanced chips.
According to Bloomberg, China relies heavily on ASML's DUV machines to improve its chip manufacturing, as it doesn't yet have the technology to produce cutting-edge semiconductors. Chinese companies can't purchase ASML's most advanced equipment, which uses extreme ultraviolet EUV technology. EUV machines are essential for producing the most advanced chips in the world, like those used in Apple's iPhones and NVIDIA's AI products. Maintenance of these machines is crucial for chip production, and companies like ASML and Applied Materials often have engineers on site at factories, including TSMCs. They work to address any issues in real time. If these engineers were to leave, some equipment could stop working as early as next year. Without ASML's DUV machines, it will become harder for Huawei and its partner, SMIC, to make any progress, especially since their current technology is already two generations behind industry leader TSMC's. In fact, companies like NVIDIA continue to push forward with AI chip development, while China's chip technology is falling further behind the rest of the world. Since 2020, the new chips designed and produced by leading American AI companies have greatly outperformed any of Huawei's Ascend 910 series chips. In the U.S., NVIDIA customers like OpenAI, Amazon, and Google will soon be able to use NVIDIA's newest Blackwell chips and the GB200 hardware powered by them. NVIDIA says the GB200 hardware is several times more powerful than its current systems. China's digital transformation requires a large number of advanced chips. If Huawei's Ascend 910C can only match NVIDIA's B20, it might be considered a breakthrough for Huawei, but it still can't compete with Western countries on a global level. Wang said, I think the CCP's loud claims about breaking U.S. sanctions are similar to launching missiles. It only causes the U.S. and its allies to put even more restrictions in place. The real question is whether the CCP can beat the U.S. and Europe. If it can't, this show of military and semiconductor strength will only lead to failure. China could be left struggling for years. Even if the CCP tries to break through, the world sees it as the biggest threat, and it's hard to change that. Despite heavy government support, Huawei still faces major challenges in the Chinese chip market. The Wall Street Journal reports that Huawei's latest Ascend 910C chip struggles with limited production capacity and low output. Initially, Chinese users weren't excited about NVIDIA's H20 chip, unsure if it was significantly better than Huawei's latest product. However, sources say that after larger H20 tests showed good results and NVIDIA lowered prices, some customers placed more orders for the H20. At the same time, some Chinese websites have exposed Huawei's internal struggles. The company's smartphones are well known, but unlike other brands, Huawei doesn't use TV or online ads. Instead, it relies on internet trolls and nationalist propaganda to manipulate Chinese consumers. Reports have also raised concerns about Huawei's phone quality. For example, some flagship models don't come with fast chargers or 5G Wi-Fi, and screens on certain Honor models lack oleophobic coating, which helps reduce fingerprints. Other Chinese phone brands have faced backlash for using low-quality screens, like the Tianma screens, which led to compensation for buyers. However, Huawei has also used these screens in its 2,000 yuan phones instead of using imported ones. Some high-end models even use regular glass for the camera lens. Not only that, there have been complaints about Huawei's stock shortages. While other brands genuinely run out of stock, Huawei reportedly holds back phones unless customers buy bundled packages. A customer service representative even joked, If you only want to buy the phone, we don't have it in stock. But if you sign up for a plan, we suddenly have it available. Would you like to buy a plan? In the end, the so-called patriotic brand isn't for everyone. Without the CCP's backing in a controlled market, Huawei's patriotic card would be a losing hand, and the Chinese people would likely reject it altogether.